Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here at Boomi World in Denver. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, day three of our coverage. We're here with Steve Lucas, the CEO of Boomi. Welcome back on theCUBE. You're solo, we're going to dig into your awesome keynote, but also a lot of questions. Welcome back. Thank you, John, it's great to see you. So, talking a big game up there on the keynote yesterday, bold vision, it's not iPass, it's bigger. Your vision connects an integration market with Boomi's success and bringing in the dots to connect with Gen AI. Um, a lot of people are talking about it. Uh, well, look, it's, I mean, you, you and I, we talk about this all the time. We, we live in a fractured software world, right? There's, you pick a category and, and there are many, many things out there. The, the issue that we're trying to solve, it's, it's really quite simple. It's customers have tons of applications, databases, yeah. APIs. That's an integration challenge, right? Why would you solve that integration challenge with a dozen integration products? It doesn't make any sense, right? It, 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 so for us, it's a single solution for integration and automation. And I know that makes sense. It's kind of on paper, right? And proof's going to be in the pudding. But we, we made some, some big moves yesterday, yeah. announced some acquisitions. We've also expanded our strategy into data management as well as AI and the like. But to your point, it's more than I pass. Yeah, and I think the API move really ups the game, first of all, because it's the cloud and on-prem. I mean, Boomi's leverage, your CFO had a great chat with me on here, uh, President and CFO, it's a good business model, Boomi. It is. It's not a lot of professional services, it's all SaaS, it's in the cloud, you got great agility, your customers love the product, uh, it solves real hard problems, on integrating, and then complex systems, by the way, too. Right. And then also, you got the platform opportunity. So, so you got a disruptive enablement opportunity. And I want to ask you about that. You got the enterprise platform that you announced, but had all the elements in there. I love the agent card, and we're going to come back to that. Yeah. But what I saw up there wasn't an iPass company. It was a enterprise platform company. So the question is, and you've been around many cycles of innovation, this one we're in is a disruptive enabler, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Which means some things will go away in light of the new inflection that we're going through. It happened in every single cycle. It will. Some stuff doesn't make it because it's not, it's antiquated and old and it deserves to be retired. Yeah. What gets disrupted? If well, you go down this path, What's going to get disrupted? Well, for, so there's two layers, there are layers, John, there's <laughs> layers. The first layer, so first of all, what gets disrupted, irrespective of Boomi, whatever it may be, is everything. The argument yesterday was, find me an application that doesn't get disrupted or really reimagined due to large language models and, and, and pre-trained transformers. This new world of AI that we're in, it, it's not the same. This is not a Apple giraffe image recognition thing. This is the ability to reason. It, it really is powerful. I agree with Eric Schmidt. I think that this round of AI is underhyped, not overhyped. So there's that. Okay. Yep. Layer two. What gets disrupted with Boomi going this path? First of all, why would any application vendor rebuild how I connect to applications and databases? How do I wrangle these APIs? Yet that's like a common starting point. It makes no sense, especially given Boomi just does that. But for me it was, how do we apply to our application database and API management solutions that we have this, this open API or, or infrastructure yeah. where you, you can write anything on top of it? That's what we're doing. That opens up a lot, number one. But number two, now coming back to the AI, piece, what really changes is we can open up the world of anyone that wants to take a small language model, large language model, and create something yeah. overnight, be disruptive in a category that can go through Boomi to do that, 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 that lowers the barrier to entry to near zero. Yeah, and I think, and, and it, also, it also highlights, um, it's a very nuanced point, but I want to get your reaction to this, it also highlights next generation cloud scale. So, iPaaS, well, I'm oversimplifying it, my, my words, not data categorical. iPaaS was a category for old stuff. You put it together, you, yeah. you, you integrate a platform. That's two right. things together. If the, if the internet is one big connective thing, set of things. So now you're always connecting. You're always integrating. And, and the Stripe relationship's interesting because they do something really, really well global payments that gets integrated with a click of some, some code. They do do that well. Okay, so why? <laughs> they're so, they're and, good. And you do your thing. So your partnering with Stripe highlights to me where, where the internet needed to go for cloud next gen. So scale and connecting. 100%. I mean, call that integration. I mean, we can call whatever you want, but when you connect two systems together yeah. in, a, in a global system, 
Is that a category or is it just reality? I mean, that's well, enterprise reality, not, I, I not think necessarily the, a category. Well, we all, I, th I think the thing is, like, we as humans, we want to label it all, right? And it's a little difficult yeah. because it's like, well, what does Boomi do, right? Well, it integrates things, yeah. it automates things. The way I, I characterize like, it, it's we interconnect and build processes. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Do we have the perfect label? You know, yesterday yeah. I heard the term hyper automation. Ah! Not bad. Hey, just hyper is a good one to throw in front of anything. Hyperscale, uh, hyper automation, hyper, hyper convergence. You know, but here's the thing: <laughs> like organizations like Stripe, what they need is yeah. the ability to go that last mile, right? And if, if Boomi, with 20,000 customers, we already do that, then integrating Stripe and Boomi is kind of the no-brainer, right? Now yeah. we need to times that by the many strategic players out there. But I think the Stripe Boomi one is natural. Well, I, it's also illustrative on another point. I want to get your reaction on. I think, and this is what, what's uh, clear to me, at least coming out of Boomi World 24 is that you guys are at scale, and so is Stripe. So I could actually create an alternative to Stripe. Integrate something easy, put it on my site, but then I can't replicate the back end. They're globally scalable. You guys are uniquely positioned as kind of an independent third party in um, Switzerland. It's, I, mean, it, I mean, the landscape's crazy. It, do you guys consider yourself Switzerland when you look at yeah. this? this layer, I mean, Switzerland meaning independent. Yeah, I, I think Because your API play is saying that, use whatever you want, customer. That's the thing, I mean, so, you know, the, the, first of all, you know, if you look at Salesforce acquiring MuleSoft, right, that was a catalyst for a lot of change in the market, right? And Salesforce, you know, the, the, the reality is like, if Salesforce isn't buying something right now, wait five minutes, right? They, <laughs> and they're, they're brilliant over there, but they bought MuleSoft, and that was a large independent integration automation player that was, taken out of the market as an independent, and that left Boomi as the modern architecture, and uh, just, we're taking advantage of that, obviously, yeah. right? But we want to expand, so we announced the acquisition of two API management companies yesterday. Why? Well, there's a vacuum in the market, right? Yeah. Why would we not do that? So Boomi's gone from integration automation to plus API management soon, and, and we're building out plus data management as well. We think we can be that one platform for the enterprise. Do you see platform sprawl coming and tool sprawl and API sprawl as a feature or a bug of the, of the, of the future yeah. world we're in? Yeah. Because if you think about the abstraction, you talk about complexity on stage, I thought what I appreciated your, your comment there, you're solving with simplicity, not more complexity, right? Well, so it, that's the old way. <laughs> it's, well, it is, right? But it's, I mean, it, so for all of the, and you said this, and I think you say it better, that you, you, you have this unique perspective in the world, which is, look, all of these things that have been invented over the past three, four decades, right? They've converged. They've given rise to things like this new kind of intelligence that we have with AI, and that's great. They all converge, blah, blah, blah. You'd think things would get simpler, yet they're getting more complicated. There's more apps, there's more yeah. databases. The average enterprise today has over 360 cloud apps alone, over a thousand databases. Yeah. That's not simpler. Yeah. So our job is to kind of help wrangle that, simplify it, that makes sense, right? But I think things are going to get more complicated before yeah. they get simpler because we have the, the, the agents are coming, right? Yeah. Now it's, we have these large language models, small language models, let's build these semi-autonomous yeah. agents on top of them. Every software company's doing it. So when we introduce yeah. those into the API application database now agent mix, it gets complex. Well, that's, I think you're onto something there. We just put out some, a new survey research from the Cube Research for RSA, uh, when in fact, it's counterintuitive if you think about it, Everyone's talking about platform consolidation and tool consolidation. Actually, the tools are increasing, and they're yeah. not sunsetting the old tools, mainly because new use cases are emerging, new threats are emerging, and the older platforms solve that threat, but not, so, so there are more tools coming out in security. Right. And that's, that's because there's new things to solve. Well, and even from an integration, like if, again, my issue, like if you have an integration, let's say challenge or problem or opportunity, I have hundreds, thousands of applications. The, the solution is not, oh, let me go get a dozen integration products and solve my integration problem with an integration problem. It doesn't work that way. That's not what you should be doing. But you walk into the average enterprise today, they've got a dozen integration tools, a dozen automation tools. How is that helping? It's not. But again, coming back okay. to the AI piece, this will exist exacerbate the issue, it's time for organizations to consolidate yeah. onto that singular platform, and again, that's why, yeah. if you look at what we're building out, integration, automation, API management, data management, one platform yeah. that we're, we're calling it the, the Boomi Enterprise Platform, we haven't named it Bob or Susie, but <laughs> cleverly the, the Boomi yeah. Enterprise Platform. Well, I think the API play is a good example because there are players out there that are taking a bottoms up approach with open source, um, but if you look at what you guys have is you've got the crown jewels of the company, you're working mission critical workloads, and I don't think it's hard to get switching costs to have some random point solution 
sway a platform that's managing critical systems, critical data, and orchestrating the APIs. Yeah. I mean, so I think that's a good bet. So um, I think that might play well. So, and 85% of all the internet traffic is, goes through APIs. Yeah. So, I mean, just think just about a little that. bit. It's like the plumbing. <laughs> yeah, it, well it is, we live, we live in an API driven world, right? I mean like this yeah. cup yeah. probably has an API, I don't know, but it, it, you know, everything seems to have yeah. an API on it. And, and look, it's a different view. You, yeah. you, you know, Boomi traditionally has been the, hey, we'll connect to all these things, we have yeah. connectors and make it easy to drag, drop, connect. And we've introduced AI versions yeah. of that and that's lovely. But applying APIs to darn near everything in the world, it lets developers interconnect yeah. systems and that's cool. But the average company today is you know, looking at 30 to 50,000 APIs that they have to think yeah. about across their applications and systems. And that's the least complex of these scenarios, right? So yeah. getting your arms around this, it's not going to get easier. Yeah, and I think the APIs, although connecting things at scale becomes more problematic. I think that's what you guys are doing. Yeah. So I want to get to your keynote. You made a couple comments I want to get into it. So the, the integration and automation, check, boomy. Yep. Gold star, that. blue ribbon. Yeah, we're done. doing our thing. Doing great. Yeah. Now you're starting to see the management team come in. A lot of SAP background, a lot of kind of web services, tech people, so you got the, the tech. So are you guys looking at it from an IT modernization platform or more of a line of business um, opportunity? Because you kind of got toes in both waters there. Or does that converge too? and the ecosystem picks up the line of business market. Well, I think, how, would you, I mean, how would you see that playing It, it has to converge, it, but here's why. Look at, look at, I mean, IT, especially the past decade, right? They've ceded some power, capability, authority to the line of business, yeah. right? Line of business, yeah. they're more empowered to pick an application, come in, and then the CIO has to figure out, okay, how do I graph that into our standards, our governance, yeah. and the like? Line of business empowered, that's not going away. It's not. Yeah. So for us, it's how do we, first of all, empower and supercharge IT, do more with less, right? Again, everything we talked about. But at the same time, in line of business, look at our partnership with Vi and I, which is a conversational yeah. finance solution. Yeah. That technology, their product called FinTalk, plugs right into Boomi. You can literally turn on conversational finance with your SAP system. That's not existed before. <laughs> I'm not building yeah. warehouses and lakes and charts and graphs. I'm just talking to it and getting answers, and that's through Boomi. That's what we're seeing. So I think to your point, it's both. Well, this is why I found it interesting because there's two issues there to, to unpack. One, Boomi's go to market in the line of business and technology. So now the next question is, okay, the agent garden and ecosystem that you guys have. Do you guys fulfill that line of business creativity, the democratization, does that come from the ecosystem or both? How do you see that? Because FinTalk's a great example. Well, I, I mean, I, that's an OEM deal with Michelle Sicca, who's, who, by the way, has great street cred to get him to put a check mark on yeah. you guys. So does, it, does that come from the ecosystem or is Boomi going to be doing more LO line of business applications? So I think it's an ecosystem play first. Now Boomi, we've built our own set of agents, but those agents are things like click a button, automatically synchronize all your information. Uh, our AI agents yeah. that watch where PII goes, data governance, and, and, and uh, design agents, that's great. Things like uh, what, what uh, Vishal Sika's organization fin, and what they produce with FinTalk, what that will do, it's the first of many line of business applications integrated by these third parties into Boomi. So I can't help but my sales, let my Salesforce heartstrings tug on me a little bit. Back to the App yeah, yeah. Exchange and Force.com yeah, yeah. days. Look, th there are going to be these agent marketplaces. We're introducing what I believe to be the first one. Yeah. Now this is, you know, we're, we're, we're not looking to corner the market on, but I'll tell you one more thing about agent marketplaces. Look, you should be able to go into an agent marketplace and say, I need an agent to talk to my finance system, like what we have with yeah. Vi&I. The same for sales, yeah. the same for marketing, the same for HR, that's going to be part of it, and we're opening the doors. And just here at this conference this yeah, week, yeah. hundreds of those opportunities, so we're going to see that. But there's more to it than that. Yeah. When these agents, and you know this like better, again, better than anybody, when these agents are running around yeah. your organization, whether they go through Boomi yeah. or not is irrelevant. Who's minding the shop? Where are these agents registering? How do I know what decisions they're making? No self-respecting CIO or COO will let hundreds of semi-autonomous or autonomous yeah. agents just go, you know what, do I have a discount for you? And they're hallucinating, yeah, yeah. right? You need to know these things, so beyond the garden, yeah. We're building, and I didn't actually announce this on stage yesterday, but we're building an agent registry. And this is where any agent, so every CIO will want an agent, yeah. it doesn't matter from where, to register yeah. 
That's great, we got a scoop here on theCUBE, that's a great point. So, if we, so a couple of things that are coming out of the CUBE interviews which I want to share with you and get your reaction. We're going to come back to this uh, agent registry. One of your, your CTO mentioned economics. He's writing a book called Unbundled, soon to be on Amazon. Plug for your book, Matt. Ah, um, uh, yes. So, economics of data is going to be a discussion. Registry, reg, a registry implies some sort of verification. Yep. We're kind of in this data supply chain opportunity. So we've talked about software supply chain, you look at Docker, they have a little registry for containers and, and, and uh, serverless, that market's growing. But you look at data, lineage has always been talked about in data, but yep. you're getting into a world where it's a kind of horizontal scalable data model with the ability to have that built into the app as well. So you have two dimensions of, of I guess this is the chess game on, on data, which is yeah. what do you make horizontally scalable Yeah. And well, how do you manage the supply chain? I don't want the agents, rogue agents going out, you know, taking over infrastructure. Well, it's data and it's decisions, right? And it doesn't matter. Pick an area of your company, right? I served up expense reports. I have this, I have this war against expense reports. And it, I, I, am, I am not a fan of expense reports. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Yet here we are in 2024 and you, you, you know, you'll get up tomorrow, I'll get up tomorrow, and there will be an expense report to approve. Why in 2024, with large language models that can be trained perfectly on human judgment and corporate policy, why are we approving expense reports? Two years from now, no one will do that. Yeah. Two years from now. Thank God. Thank you, right? So, <laughs> but that's a decision that, that we held as human beings that we will gladly cede to AI. Yeah. Now multiply that times a thousand or 10,000 because of all these decisions that we hold as humans. Yeah. So it's not just the data, it's the decisions. Yeah. I believe this registry needs to be about these, the data, the agents, and the decisions that they make, yeah. independent of human beings, yeah. I still want to know what they're deciding. I mean, they're, ver they're basically verified. It's, it's business logic, it's coming back full circle. Yep. I mean, the world's yeah, changed. Okay, so the, the big strategic question is, is that what's next on the M&A front? Um, what's the next um, organic growth you're going to do? So inorganic growth, organic growth, you're making the big moves, great, great props there. You got a great CFO you've worked with, he's done M&A at SAP. Yeah. You've seen the movie many times. Yeah. What's, the, what's the inorganic and organic uh, to-do items for you? Well, yeah, as you know, so organic, or inorganically, we announced the acquisition of Mashery as well as Apita, so that's part of our API management yep. strategy. On the M&A front, then I'll come back, well, so on the organic front actually, it's all about data management. So we are building out our ETL. We're building out uh, master data management capabilities, more so than we have today. We are in and expanding in the data management market. Yeah. We will win there and M&A will happen there as well. So data management is a big yeah. win area for us because our customers want us to expand there. We're going to do that. In API, or, or sorry, in the AI world, look, you know, Boomi's ability to take Something that's really complicated today. I go get a model like Llama mm -hmm. yeah. 3, for example, built by Meta. Yeah. I have some data. I want to fine tune or ground that model. That's a complex process. Boomi's enabling that through single clicks now to be able to fine tune those yeah. models. That's heavy organic investment for Boomi as well. So you're going to see us across integration automation, API management, data management. We're, we're, we will acquire in all of those areas. So last question for you. I'll set it up by saying just some observations from the interviews here. Um, Fast feedback loops with Boomi, access to customer deployments, 300 million integrations. Your AI is now trained. Yeah. <laughs> Look, that's a competitive advantage, so opportunity there. Um, very loyal customer base. They love I the love product, that. they love the product. Ecosystems emerging. Agent Garden kind of shows you the way uh, with the marketplace. Um, you mentioned low code, lang chain, kind of integrating stuff for around data, about runtime. This has a growth trajectory that is going beyond iPass. 100%. Um, so, as you look at that, what is your investment um, areas that you're going to put the most wood behind the arrow on? Is it ecosystem, product, all of the above? Uh, you don't need to put, give me percentages, but give, give me a feel for where your priorities will be. I mean, obviously, I can see value, because like, like companies like Amazon and other growth companies, they all start out this way. They got a flywheel going. Well, right now it's about fulfilling demand. So for us, part of this event right here is how do we engage with partners? Because the reality is with the market breaking our way and you look at companies that are moving away from technology like MuleSoft and they're moving into uh, Boomi in particular, we, we, we need partners. So you look at what, like what we're doing with Infosys and there's a big yeah. announcement around that today, it's fulfilling demand. So there's a big investment in just demand fulfillment. And the second thing is go to market expansion where we, we continue to hire. 
uh, you know, I, I look at the news, I look at tech companies and the long list of layoffs, yeah. and Boomi's going to continue to hire, continue to expand, continue yeah. to grow. This is our moment. What's your pitch to the people out there that could be partners and or people who want to just join in and build on top of the platform? Um, what areas would you say would be good white spaces or, or areas to, to camp out on and build on top of or partner? What's the, what's the, what's well, the main? You, you kind of called it out there a little bit ago is like you know, anything in line of business, if you're looking to, especially in the world of AI, as I'm just the firm believer in the transformative power of these agents that are coming, but if you're looking to build you know, enterprise grade agents, for HR, sales, marketing, finance, legal. We want you building those agents through and on the Boomi platform and they can be done near instantly. So the amount of time from idea to execution is, is, is near zero and that's, that's what we want. Steve, great to have you on theCUBE. Love the vision, love the team, look putting together. Great trajectory you guys are on. Market timing is, I mean, Timing is everything. Boomi's done a lot of the hard, heavy lifting coming into this wave, so you look guys are looking good. Um, final, final question. Next year, Boomi 2025, we'll be sitting here. What are we going to be talking about? What accomplishments will be on your, on your checklist? And then what is, will be the conversation next year? Well, I look at you know, a, a year ago when, you know, a year and a half ago, kind of when ChatGPT just came, became part of the, 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 the nomenclature, the, the terminology, everything we're talking about, right? Look at what's happened just here at Boomi. We, we had an idea, we're going to take all of this data and our, our AI that we've been working on for a long time, we're going to supercharge that with generative, we're going to build on large language models. We now have a technology a year later that can literally understand um, these are the systems I'd like to connect and, I, and doing it through English language and I'd like to do that every Tuesday. Could you please <laughs> synchronize all my data for me and it just knows, yeah. and that's a year, and we've yeah. trained it on 300 million integrations. A year from now, the productivity that we will see will be greater than anything, and then I'm talking about in the world of IT. We will see the yeah. most productive decade in IT that has ever been known to mankind, and Boomi's going to help usher that in. Yeah. Now that's thanks to the hard work of companies like OpenAI, Meta, yeah, yeah, Google, yeah, yeah. Microsoft, and the like, but I, I think the world that we live in, one short year from now, profoundly different. Awesome, well congratulations on the momentum and continued success. We'll be tracking, you guys I know will be on the road, talking to customers, and uh, congratulations, great, what a great event. Thank you, thanks for being here. Steve Lucas, CEO of Boomi here on theCUBE, bringing all the action, talking the big game here on theCUBE. Check out the great market timing for Boomi, congratulations on the great team. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.